Hey everybody, Rob here. So I have another video for my project truck, the 2000 Tahoe Z71, the last of the GMT 400s. So in this video, all we're really gonna do is we're gonna do a tune-up on the truck. The truck has over 180,000 miles on it. I don't know when a tune-up was last done. Could have been done at 180, could have been done at 100, could have been done at 150, or it could not have been done at all. I don't know, truck didn't come with any records. I'm doing it so I know when it was last done. I'm doing it for me, because again, there's no records that came with this truck. I think I got one service record that I found and that's when the truck was under warranty 20 plus years ago. So what does the tune-up entail? It entails new spark plugs, new wires, a new distributor cap, and a new distributor rotor. And it also covers an ignition coil. So we have all those parts, we're just gonna go ahead and do it. Now it started raining for this video, so we had to actually shimmy the truck in the garage. You can see the picture there of the back of the truck kind of sticking out of the garage because the garage really isn't big enough to hold that truck. But we did manage to get it in and my friend Anthony and I were able to just get to work. So without further ado, we're just gonna dive right into working on this truck. You're trying to take that off so we can get the air box out. I wanna remove this all that. Entire, all this plastic, get this out of the way. Everything's been on here for a long time. I wanna be able to walk it off, just stuck on the bottom. I'm probably warped all these years. At least it's on there with clamps. Now, I think this whole box just literally clips, like just pushes in. Clips out. I don't out. think there's any bolts. There could be bolts underneath the filter. The filter don't look too bad. Yeah, we'll just take, we'll just get everything out of the way. Get the housing out of the way. Yeah, there's a little, there's a little tiny plug there. Ugh. See, to me, that doesn't look too bad. It ain't terrible, it ain't great, but like, see how all there's, it's all black stuff inside? Yeah. yeah. In like deep into deep, the filter? Deep inside, yeah. Yeah, not worth getting a new one. Okay. It's not, I mean, you're not gonna like break down or anything, but it might be worth getting a new one at some point. Yeah, okay. All right. See, this, see that plug right there? This? No. That right there. Yeah, there's, there's like push. They like, like little push pins or something? Yeah, this probably clips into the fender. They do because uh, my buddy, my other friend's truck is missing them. I don't know if I just yank up on this and then it, um, like it's pressure fit. Maybe it's pressure fit. This, this goes like this. Take that out. Put that in. Look in there. How does it look? Actually, not too bad. Yeah, all right, cool. Not too bad. Nice, Looks pretty good. The engine itself is relatively clean, so. Yeah, it runs nice. Just got a little bit of a hiccup at, at idle, which hopefully all this ignition will, we'll fix. will solve. So, um, I just, I don't know if I should just yank up on this or I have to like... Does it turn? It does turn, but it doesn't do anything. Oh, wait. Those are there instructions on there? No, I thought there were. Oh, bummer. I just don't, don't want to yank up on it and break a clip. I just don't know. And take a look at that we're gonna so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get the air box out we're gonna take the intake off and then we're gonna do a tune-up plugs wires cap rotor ignition coil and all that so let's go ahead and i'll give him a hand and try to get that out all right so we have to try to figure out how to get this piece off here so i'm gonna take the wires off here the ignition coils right here there's a heat sink there also, and it looks like computer. it controls spark. slides in or bolts in from the other side on two sides, because there's, you can see the bracket that's there. So we'll go ahead, we'll take all the wires off, we'll take the little heat sink off, and then we will... Well, maybe computer. Yeah, we'll take all that off, and um, yeah, we'll continue on from there, one piece at a time. So after a little bit of trial and error and research, we got the ignition coil bracket out. We found a, a walnut, it looks like, in there. I thought it was an acorn at first, but I doubt it's any good. But it was held on with a double-studded uh, little bolt here, which is pretty cool. Never seen one of these before. That's pretty neat. But we got it out, so we're going to swap the new one in, and then we'll carry on. So it looks like this is actually the original ignition coil because we did some further research and they're put in with rivets. They put them in with rivets for somewhat odd reason. They're supposed to come with bolts when you've got the new ones, but mine didn't. So we're gonna try to punch it out, grind it out, see if we can get it apart, and then we will figure out how to put it back together when we're done. But yeah, this is the original one and they riveted together. That's a really bad design, but hey, whatever. So we're gonna take all the wires off, we're gonna take the distributor off, and then we will put it all back together once we're done, and we'll figure out the ignition coil later. Unfortunately, the ignition coil, punching it out with a punch didn't work. I'll have to grind them out and get some bolts for it. But we'll go ahead and take all the wires off first. All right, so we got the spark plug wires out, and we got the distributor cap out. You got your rotor down there. Wires were a bit of a pain, but there is some corrosion on that. I don't think you can see it in the video too well, but there is some corrosion on that. There's also, I'll show you in a minute, the old cap with all the wires on it and how old they are. There's a lot of corrosion on the cap. 
there's a lot of corrosion on that, but they are off. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna mark where that is, we're gonna mark the new one, we're gonna swap it where it is, so we don't we don't disrupt or have to try to figure out, you know, all the timing and all the other nonsense in the positioning, because we don't really wanna do that. So we'll go ahead, we'll swap that, and then we'll slowly put it back together. Here you can see the two little rotors. The gray one is the old one. You can see there's a little bit of corrosion on the end of it and towards the center, which is just normal use. We could just file it down and it'll be okay, but we have a brand new one right here. This one's brand new right out of the box. So we will go ahead and put that back on. My friend Anthony's working on the spark plugs. We got one out right here, burning white, which he says is running a little uh, lean. I think it's lean. Maybe running, running too hot. lean. Running lean or too hot? It's either lean or cooling. I don't remember. You can look it up on a, on a graph or a table. They have okay. like an infographic you yeah. can see. But we'll get the other seven of them out. They're old. I know that. That's used for sure. They're old. Yeah, they're old. So we'll get the other seven out of there, and then we'll get it running again. I have no doubt in my mind that that was probably misfiring at some point. Oh, man. See how it's dark on one side and not on the other? Yeah. Probably misfiring. Okay. All right. So we're almost there with the spark plugs. All right, so you can see this is the, the new distributor cap with the two little bolts that it has. It's like they're uh, little torques there. This one obviously is brand new, so it has no corrosion in it. This is the old distributor cap. These are the two bolts that it came out with. They used one of these in there. So we tried to thread one of the new bolts through the hole. Unfortunately, that hole is stripped. That's why they had to use that screw. Someone's been there before. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have to reuse the old hardware to mount it, but you can kind of see the corrosion in here. Obviously this could have been cleaned up and reused, but we have a new one. And it looks like somebody labeled these. Looks like they put labels on them. Not very good labels. They just say one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four on that side. So we're gonna have to probably look at a diagram to put it back on. Last one. Anthony just got the last spark plug out. So yeah, these are bad. That hopefully will fix our misfire. We got our new NGK spark plugs. Look at that. So yeah, you can see the new one versus the old one. So you can see that's the new one, nice and clean. Obviously the gapping is, it's the standard gapping on these. So they put the caps over them in the box. So that way yeah. if they drop the box, you don't move the gap. So you, don't got, so you got there. And then quick comparison of the old ones. Yeah, you can see how bad those are. You can see how bad those spark plugs are compared to the new ones. They are brutal. They've been in there for a long time. Yeah. They're Delco, so they could be original. I don't think no, because the grease is still good, but they could be. Maybe they were changed once in 180,000. Well, I would say they had to be changed. Either they changed the plugs changed or they something. changed the wires yeah. because I, I they would changed say they something. Have probably uh, 80,000 on it. I bet you they changed them at like around 100. They might have, yeah. It's got 180 on it, so. He's got maybe have 80K on him. Yes, we're going from AC Delcos to the NGKs. And these were the better ones. These were the NGKs Platinum Alloy Spark Plugs. That's kind of what we're going to go with. So these should last a little longer, hopefully. All right, let's put them in. So we have our Delphi rotor on. We have our new Delphi cap right here, our NGK spark plug wires, and the NGK spark plugs are in. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this on. We're gonna look up a diagram because I don't trust the labeling that the previous owner did or whoever did it previously. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on. They're all greased up. And then um, we'll figure out what to do with the ignition coil when we're done. We did manage to get the rivets out. GM, when you could have used bolts. You could have used, used bolts. Aluminum little rivets, rivets. Yeah. Could have used those, you know, a couple screws with some, you know, nuts on the end. So you gotta chisel the ends off and then punch them straight through. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, basically a chisel with a punch and uh, that ancient thing. Hey, it works. It works. So what we're gonna do now is actually we're going to drill the holes out a little bigger, just so we can fit those two screws and those nuts on the end. There's a, there's a lot of corrosion in there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot in there. All right. And then we got a fresh one. Yeah, our fresh uh, one is yeah. over there. So yeah, we're gonna drill that out and we're gonna put it back together and start the truck up. We'll, hopefully. Well, yeah, hopefully. All right, so we put some, some screws in, some hardware on the back, because for some reason GM didn't want to do that. They thought it would be a good idea to put rivets in there. Rivets are a bad idea. We had to punch them out with a punch and a chisel to cut them, cut the ends off. But yeah, we got new ones in, that's all good. And actually what we're gonna do this is, is a little overkill, but why not? Pro right here. Probably not necessary, but there was some thermal paste on here like you'd find on your computer for the heat sink. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clean this up and we're gonna put new thermal paste in here just because obviously you can tell there's none left. There's no doubt this gets warm too. So we will go ahead and do that and keep it cool. So when that's all done, we'll do we'll show you what it looks like and then we'll get it on and we'll fire it up. 
is all our new stuff, our new wires, our new plugs, our new distributor cap, new distributor rotor. We didn't actually put the thermal paste on there because I realized I didn't have any here, so we just don't want to do that. We just want to get the truck running. And we cleaned the throttle body a little bit, cleaned all the gunk out of there as best we could. We just got to put the air box back on and uh, can fire it up. All right, you ready? I mean, you could start it now just to make sure it works. Right? Oh yeah, that's true. Actually, I lied. You lied? It needs this. It needs your mass airflow. Oh, yeah, okay. We gotta put the mass airflows back in. We we'll just put the whole thing I mean, back in. we could start it without it. It's not gonna run nice. Yeah, let's that, not that's, do that. that's true. Yeah, good point. All right, let's go put, we'll put the airbox back on, put the mass airflow sensors back in, and then start it up. All right, everything's in place, and we're gonna go ahead and start it up. You take bets if it explodes. You take bets if it starts. Yeah, right. Nice and smooth. The belt is a squeaky. Sound. Yeah, the belt's a little squeaky, but it started right up. Throttle feels really smooth. We're gonna go take it for a test drive and see Maybe how it we does. We gotta burn off all the car yeah. cleaner and WD-40. Yeah, we gotta it's burn all there. that stuff off. All right, so we're out driving it around. So far, it feels pretty good. Shifts better, it runs better. It's not hiccuping anymore. Ironically, our check engine light went away. That could be because we had the battery disconnected for a while, but I don't really know. My buddy Anthony's driving it right now so I can get some video of it. It's not hiccuping anymore. There's no vibration in when you come to a stop and you let it idle. Wiper blades are a little squeaky and got some vibration, got some other squeaks we gotta work out. But other than that, it feels much better. Remember, it was new plugs, new wires, distributor cap, rotor, and an ignition coil. Much better so far. So it is idling smoother. We thought we got rid of the check engine light, but the check engine light did come back, so we'll have to check that again. But yeah, other than that, it seems to be running really well. The radio works without the antenna, so that's a good sign. But so far, so good. It works. I can't even feel it idling. No, that's the kind of way you want it. But uh, it works really well. Everything seems to be running really well. It's running much, much better than when I bought it. I know I said I wasn't going to put thermal paste on there, but my buddy came in clutch with some thermal compound with a shelf life of five years. He was telling me his dad has had this from the 80s, so it's older than I am, it's older than this car. But we're going to use this, then we're going to take off the ignition control module, we're going to clean it up, we're going to put the thermal compound on there, we're going to put it on there, we're going to go ahead and clear the engine code that we got, and then we'll go for a drive. All right, so we got the ignition control module out, and you can see there is no thermal paste on this bad boy at all. Literally, just there's nothing here. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to clean this up, maybe some alcohol, clean it up, put some new paste on, and then put it back on. Relatively simple, really. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we got our thermal compound on here. There's our heat sink, and we got thermal compound on the bracket there. So again, this is real simple. Didn't think it would be this simple when we originally took it apart, but let's go ahead and bolt this all back together, and uh, yeah, that's it. All right, and there you have it. New thermal compound on there, so that shouldn't heat up too bad, and we should be all good to go. And this tune-up is pretty much done. We'll just put everything back together and fire it up. All right, so you just saw the whole tune-up of that truck. Complete tune-up from when we started to when we finished with the thermal compound on the ignition coil bracket for that heat sink. We did the spark plugs, we did the wires, we did the distributor cap, we did the distributor rotor, and we did the ignition coil. And at the very end, that thermal compound. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now, now that we've done that, the truck started up right after we finished it, like normal, just like you saw before, but prior to us putting the thermal compound on, the truck started fine, but we do have that check engine light that we have to check. So that's, that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna go back to the truck, and we're gonna check the check engine light, see what the code is, and see if we can clear it now that the tune-up is done, and see if it'll go away. So let's get back to it. All right, so the truck's running, and you can see that we have the check engine light. So I got this little nifty Bluetooth little OBD scanner. We're going to put that in. We're going to see what that check engine light is. We're going to clear the check engine light. We're going to go drive around for a little bit, see if the check engine light comes on. And if it does, then we really know that we actually have to fix something. So I want to see if it clears. And if it does, great. So we'll go ahead, we'll unbox this, and we'll plug it in. We'll go ahead and we'll follow the getting started instructions and we will see what it does. It's Bluetooth, which is nice. So I have my phone here and you'll be able to see it. So I'll go ahead and get this all set up. Okay. Plug it in. Oh God. Okay, I think that 
that's in. Continue. Uh, yes. The LED light is on. Yes. Press the pair button. Okay. Continue. Okay. Okay. I don't know what all the other stuff is. I guess it's still thinking about it. Oh, okay. Alright, it's thinking. There you go. I'm done. Nope, nope, never mind. Okay, it was thinking about it. Did it not pair? Huh. Alright, so I think we got it to work this time. This is the first time. Complete the registration. Yes, register. Yes, register. Unnecessary process, but okay. Okay, successful. There are no pending. Okay. Oh, uh, yep. Okay. Oh, we gotta put the vehicle in. Okay, I'm just gonna put the year in. This is an unnecessary process. I don't know why we have to do all this nonsense, but we have to do all this nonsense. Oh, it's the Chevrolet Chevrolet. Option. Please type in vehicle option. C71. Okay, we don't need the VIN number right now. Okay, let's see if the dashboard works. Oh, look at that! It works! Give it a little rev. Yeah. Okay, alright, not bad, not bad. It does work. Little neat, uh, neat little gauges here. Um, diagnostics. To be sure to do. Okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Okay, so confirmed. So we have a P0430, which is the catalyst system efficiency below threshold. And then we have another pending, which is the same thing. And then the uh, lamp is on in the freeze frame DTC. It's all the same code. It's a P0430. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to clear these. Okay, so we should probably turn the engine off. Yeah, all right, you know, we're, we're going to hit no. And we're going to turn the engine off. So we turn the engine off. The key is still on. And let's just go back out of there, hit the diagnostic again. We don't want to do it with the engine running because God forbid we break something. I don't want to do that. Okay, warning. Yes, sure, fine, bye. Okay, so we've cleared that. We're going to go on a quick test drive and then we will see if the engine light turns back on and we will check it again. All right, so we put some miles on the truck. The check engine light came back on pretty short into the journey, but we just kept driving anyway. We checked the code again. It's the same code again, P0430. It's something to do with the uh, the catalyst system. So we're not going to do it in this update, but we will take a look at the exhaust system and check. We'll check the catalytic converter, all that stuff. But for now, you know, we can still drive it. It's nothing major, but it's not going to go away for now. There you have it, we're all done. That's the tune-up for the 2000 Tahoe Z71. That includes, like I said before, the spark plugs, the wires, the distributor cap, the rotor, the and the ignition coil with a little thermal compound, and at the very end, we used the OBD2 scanner to clear and check the engine code. That engine code again was P0430. What is that engine code? Well, that's the catalyst system. There's something wrong or off with the exhaust system. It could be something as simple as the catalytic converter is damaged, it's not working properly, or it's the oxygen sensors before and after something is wrong somewhere along those lines so we have to go ahead and check those could be a whole number of reasons but it's not a serious engine code can still drive the truck the truck will be fine so we did actually have some fun learning experiences as you saw Anthony got to climb into the engine bay it's not the first time he did that he did that on my old Chevy Blazer that I had and he's doing it on the 2000 Tahoe that I bought I got to go ahead and do the distributor cap which was putting the uh, grease on these new spark plugs which included you know connecting the spark plugs to the cap and actually doing all the wiring and running the wiring so it actually looked pretty neat it was a pretty good experience and honestly it wasn't that bad of a job to do unfortunately like I mentioned in the video there are some pieces to the distributor housing that the cap bolts to that are are broken so that's why we had to use those mismatched pieces of hardware unfortunately the only way to fix that would be to pull the entire distributor apart including the piece that goes all the way down into the engine block we have to pull the whole thing apart and f put a new one in with you know we don't that's that's we're, that's fine the engine runs we don't need to do any of that stuff so with that engine code the p0430 I just want to go ahead and actually provide a little link for everybody if you want to read the link below you can it'll, it'll bring you up you can have a whole read up of that engine code and if, if you feel like reading it I kind of read through it it's basically fine 
trying to drive with. Just you'll probably fail inspection, which I will probably fail inspection if I try to bring it with that check engine light. So we will have to get that fixed one day, but that's for another video. We'll do that later. We can still drive the truck for now. I had a fun time. It was a fun time working with my friend Anthony on that. I thank him for his help, his expertise on that, taking the spark plugs out, handling that part of the job while I did the other parts of the job. Kind of worked together hand in hand, made it go a lot faster. It took a couple hours to do in total. Don't remember the total time, but we had a good time. It was fun. It was a learning experience and that's what it's all about. So I thank you for watching if you made it this far. So if you like the content, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, whatever you feel like doing. I won't judge you. And uh, I'll catch you next time with more videos to come. See you next time.